Hi all to be this Canadian Jenny. Thank you so much for watching. I just want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. If this is your first time, please don't forget to subscribe. It's very easy to do so. Just hit the subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell icon. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how you can get yourself ready for 2024 if you want to relocate to Canada as a skilled worker. Okay, so let's get started. So I know it's been a while. Um, it's been very busy and hectic here. Some stuff I'll share with you in 2024. But like I do at the end of um, every year, I like to analyze how um, the immigration process has been for that year and talk about projections for 2024 for the next year. So this is going to be for 2024. So that if you're still thinking of coming to Canada, if you still would like to relocate to Canada, so you don't waste your time, energy and effort. Um, we're going to look at projections for uh, next year and what you can do to um, make yourself successful. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today. The whole point is how you can um, strategize for 2024. Okay, so um, I like telling stories and I meet a lot of people, you know, online subscribers. And so I was talking to uh, this family I'd known, I have known for over two years and they've been in the Express Entry poll for over two years. And I remember this same time last year, you know, I was telling them, try something else, do something different. And they're like, no, you know, they're just going to wait for 2023. And they're still in the extra century pool. So we're just talking some days ago. And I'm like, listen, you need to re-strategize. It's no longer business as usual when it comes to, you know, relocating to Canada as a skilled worker. The competition is fierce and immigrate, the immigration process has changed. Okay, so let me just do a quick refresher. If you're new on my channel or you're new to um, this whole relocating to Canada as a skilled worker, I'm gonna do a quick refresher and then we're gonna talk about the changes that came in 2023 and most importantly, how you can prepare yourself for 2024. I'm gonna give two recommendations on you know things you can do different in 2024 to make yourself um, to increase your chances, you know, of relocating to Canada as a skilled worker. So, um, real quick, the different ways you can come to Canada as a skilled worker, as a student. Majority of people here in Canada, majority of immigrants, majority of us, we came as skilled workers. So when you hear people say permanent residency or I just got a PMP or provincial nomination program, that person is talking about coming as a skilled worker, so, you know, because there's a skilled worker stream. Now, it's not just as easy as saying, oh, I want to come as a skilled worker. For this stream, there is a criteria, there's a process, okay? Um, the criteria, for the criteria, you need to meet it. You need to make sure you're eligible. So like for me and my family, when we started this, when we said to ourselves, oh, we want to come to Canada, we started doing some research. Um, we made sure that we met the eligibility criteria and this include, you know, um, having some kind of work experience, skilled work experience or skilled trade experience. We said, okay, we have this, having some kind of um, educational qualification, it being maybe an HND or a bachelor's or a master's ETC, having funds in your account. Okay, I will put the link to this. Um, criteria if you're just starting your journey so you have to meet this criteria now it's not just as easy as meeting the criteria that Immigration Canada set this criteria is point based so you will get points for your age for the number of years experience you have you know um, part of the criteria is taking the language proficiency exam in Canada is French or English you will get points will be allocated to you and how it has predominantly been done, okay, prior to 2023, is that is the people with the highest points that are successful, okay? So a lot of people would apply, hundreds of thousands of people are in a pool and they apply. 
and the way it was done like when we were coming in 2019 is the people with the highest points okay so all the criteria is totaled you get a point you know you get points if you get the highest points then you're successful you're given an invitation to apply okay but in 2023 in the middle of 2023 immigration canada you know changed things up a bit what they said what the official said was that instead of just doing um you know having this um draw whereby we just invite people that have the highest points we're going to change things different and what's going to be done is that people the people now that we're going to be inviting okay the skilled workers and skilled traders we're going to be inviting are those that are in demand in canada so what canada wants to do is fill in there's some labor shortage um areas so they want to fill that in Okay, so they brought up what they call the category-based draws. So you can meet all these criteria, you can have good points, but it means you might not be successful if you're not part of the in-demand categories in Canada. And the in-demand categories they set in 2023, in the middle of 2023, were include um, healthcare professionals which are really, really in demand in Canada. So nurses, continuing care assistants, doctors, physiotherapists, also skilled workers that have science, um, technology, engineering, and mass, a math um, experience, okay? People with experience in agriculture and agri-food. And of course, people that have French okay as their first or second language so canada changed things up a bit so you can meet the criteria right now you can have some good points but if you do not have work experience in health the stem courses agriculture or skill trade like transport plumbing um, construction you might not be successful because right now canada is concentrating on skilled workers and skilled traders in this different fields and of course people that have French and what I mean by um, have French proficiency is people that have taken the French language exam and have gotten decent scores so a friend of mine and myself were joking the other day that if we had waited till now to start thinking about relocating to Canada we will not be successful because I don't have a background in health or any of the STEM courses, you know, I'm in communications. So we would have just been in the express entry pool and we probably would not have gotten an invitation to apply. My friend is in banking, they're in the banking industry. And so there's a lot of people right now that are just waiting. They have decent scores. Cause like I said, in the past, it was people that had the highest scores. But Canada has changed things. And I tell people right now that when you're thinking of coming to Canada as a skilled worker, even as a student, it's no longer business as usual. The process, the system is changing. So your mind, you know, set also has to change. You have to re-strategize. Okay, and so I was talking to this family that has been waiting for over two years. And I said, listen, you guys are gonna keep waiting if you don't do things differently. And so the, uh, you know, the wife was telling me that she should go back to school and get a health course. Would that be better? She can do that in a year. I said, it's not just going back to school and getting a health course. You need at least one year work experience in health, you know, in a health um, based sector. So we're talking two years. Who has, who has that time to waste? So I said, my recommendation, and it's just my recommendation, okay? Number one, if you can afford it, consider coming to study. Okay, right now, coming to study in Canada, it's expensive. You know, the requirements for the proof of funds have changed, they've gone up. It's expensive. However, but it, it's now one of the fastest ways to come in. Okay, so that would be one of my, so I was telling them, I said, if you can afford it, 
if you have the funds just think about the added advantage consider that number two i've said this so many times and i'm gonna keep saying it again get a second language and that second language is french is it hard to learn a second language and take the exam yes it is extremely hard is it doable yes it's doable and when people hear or oh, learn french to come to canada they just think of the province of quebec which is the only french you know speaking um province in canada but no the province i live in nova scotia they frequently have draws for people that french is their first language new brunswick is a bilingual province you want to move to New Brunswick, you, what, you want to be successful in moving to the province of New Brunswick, having French is really going to help. Other provinces in Canada, um, Ontario, Manitoba, BC, they'll have streams that also favor people that have French as their first language. I was in Montreal um, a couple of months ago, I think it was October or September. I just went for a mini vacation with a friend and I met up with some subscribers ton good friends and family that I met through my channel and these um, these people they came from Nigeria and in Nigeria we speak English or your mother tongue like I speak Hausa our main you know lingua franca is English so everybody yes you learn French in school but it's small French comment ça va bonjour that's it but this family, this, you know, husband and wife with kids, they took it upon themselves to learn French. Was it easy? No. In fact, I said I have to interview them for this channel so they can encourage people. After work, after you've put the kids to bed, they started learning French. And they were successful. Two families, you know, to relocate to the province of uh, Quebec. In fact, we went to eat. And I heard them conversing in French with one of the waiters, you know, in the restaurant we're in. And I was shocked. They were speaking French like French was their first language. I was like, wow, kudos to you guys. And now it just, yes, it took about a year. Did they get them to Canada? Yes. Is it helping out now? Yes. And they're just speaking it like it's doable. You know, we, we just think it's hard because it's learning a new language, but it is doable. So that is my recommendation for 2024 so that you don't waste time, you don't waste energy. For this family that has been in the pool for two years, they're going to have to take their English proficiency exam again because after two years it, exp it expires. With each passing year, you lose five points with age for age. You know, so instead of wasting time, if your field is not in health, or in agriculture, or in science, technology, or in, you know, transportation, plumbing, learn French. I'm going to keep, that's the way Canada is going right now. Canada wants to strengthen, you know, its French um, history. That's the way it's going. Even in Nova Scotia, where yeah, a province that is, you know, English is the first language, if you have French, even as a second language, your you know chances, options of getting jobs are much higher than somebody that just has French. In fact, some jobs right now, you see them, you see job adverts, and they tell you, you know, French, you know, having French as a second language is an advantage. And if you have that, you will get the job, you know, you have that added advantage so it would really help or if you can afford it consider coming as an international student regardless of your age whether you're in your 20s 30s 40s 50s if you can afford it consider coming as an international student okay the advantages are limitless so that's my two cents my recommendation like i said is just my recommendation because the projection for 2024 for skilled workers is that this category based um, draws are going to keep happening. Canada wants to fill the labor shortage, so they're not going to just keep inviting everybody like they used to. It's going to be specific. They're going to target specific 
um, people that have specific skills and if you don't have that skill, you don't have that background, what are you gonna do? Consider one of these two options. Um, yeah, so that's it for me. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Instagram at Bebus Canadian Journey, send a DM and I'll respond when I can. And until next time, keep watching and wishing you a very prosperous 2024. Hope to see you next year. Take care. Mm -hmm.